All right, so today um, we are going to be reacting to an opera diva that I think has in so many ways kind of informed the decisions that I've made thus far in my own young career in both classical and contemporary music because I kind of consider myself a crossover artist and in my decision to found this company she was a huge inspiration for me and that is none other than the very very famous Maria Callas. Maria Callas is kind of a legend. When she came on the scene she was very responsible for revolutionizing the way that opera was traditionally performed. She is not just, um, as I mentioned in the Ariana Grande video, <laughs> a park and barker. She is a um, actress through and through. Started breathing new life into a lot of these um, female operatic roles, particularly for soprano. They had more depth and more nuance of character. And as a result of that, she's kind of renowned for her acting subtleties and the beautiful characterizations and genuine performances that she gives on stage. Everybody kind of has mixed reactions to her voice itself. I happen to think that her voice is extremely aesthetically pleasing and really beautiful, but I also think that it's beautiful because of its imperfections. She wasn't just a park and bark singer. Um, she understood the subtleties and the nuances of creating an extremely genuine character on stage, and she's probably one of the most intentional and expressive performers that I have ever seen. There is no doubt that you can you can just feel the artistry all the way from here, even though it was from a time in the past. So she's just absolutely incredible, and she's a huge inspiration for me. She's been a huge, um, especially dramatic or expression-based role model for me throughout my young career as an artist so far. So without further ado, uh, it is super Super chilly in my music studio tonight. I do not know why it is so cold. It has been raining like crazy all day today. I have a pumpkin spice candle because I'm basic. I don't know. <laughs> it brings me comfort. It smells good. I have my blanket and my warm cup of tea. So we are all good to go. And uh, let's watch some Maria Callas. Okay, so I know that it's just the instrumental so far because there's a long um, lead in into this piece, but I thought I would mention that this is the Aria Casta Diva. This is a very, very um, signature role for Callas in her career. And if you don't know about this opera, I definitely encourage you to look it up. It has a very interesting plot. I'm actually gonna read it off of <laughs> Wikipedia of all places right now because it words it a lot more concisely than I can. It's kind of a crazy story storyline, but basically the action takes place in Gaul under the Roman occupation and it's centered on the love triangle between Polion, the Roman proconsul of Gaul, Norma, his former companion, and the young Adelgisa. I think it's Adelgisa. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, the background is the uprising of the Gallic people against the Roman occupiers led by the Druid Orovesso. Um, Norma, who is the high priestess of the Druid temple, who had two children by Polion, the Roman proconsul of Gaul, um, is breaking her Druid chastity vows and discovers that her lover is now in love with her friend, the young Druid priestess, which is Adelgisa. Um, and then Norma tries to convince Polion to give up Adelgisa and return to her, but he refuses. Norma publicly confesses her fault and is sentenced to death by fire. And then Polion is convicted for pursuing Adelgisa in the tempo and go temple and goes to the stake with Norma. 
So this is a very, very intense opera, as many, many bel canto operas are. And if you're not familiar with bel canto, bel canto is basically, um, it means beautiful singing. It's an Italian style of singing opera that has a lot to do with very, very fluid phrasing. Um, very, very beautiful romantic coloratura. It was meant to show off the singer's musicality and agility all at the same time. So this is an incredibly nuanced, beautiful piece of music. Um, it is a very famous aria. It has made its way into the mainstream uh, based off of Callas's performances, performance and other prominent performances of it in the past. I personally think that Callas's is, is the best, but once again, Collis is one of my favorite singers. So <laughs> I'm a little biased in this video, but there's a reason why I wanted to react to her because I just think she's so incredible. This is a very, very interesting opera. So I definitely encourage all of you, especially who are new to opera, to look this up and wa maybe watch some scenes from the show on YouTube, or even if you can find a full production, uh, that could be a really, really cool um introduction to opera for you because it has very very beautiful music it is by vincenzo bellini i don't know if i said that before but that's the composer This is some of the most beautiful, nuanced acting in an introduction that I have ever seen. And that's part of the reason I wanted to um, analyze this performance was the fact that this is, in my opinion, how a true professional performer sets you up during a long musical interlude at the beginning. So basically this entire aria is, uh, to put you more in the context of the show, I believe this is kind of her prayer to the gods that they're going to defeat the Romans in battle. So there's this sense of kind of like foreboding tension in the aria that something really epic or really big is about to happen, whether it be a good thing or a bad thing. And it kind of feels like, um, it kind of feels like the calm before the storm a little bit. I was talking with my husband, who's executive producer for Opera Cecilia. I was talking with him about this the other day. And it honestly, this whole entire aria feels like a calm before the storm. It's this moment of prayer, this moment of meditation before a really, really big thing happens that she knows is going to be kind of a, a landmark or a huge life change uh, for her and her people. So there's the, the that foreboding tension and that weight that the aria carries. And she went through this entire emotional evolution through that intro. She set us up for that character brilliantly. She had so many different shifts in thought. And if you really, really followed her movements closely and you really like paid attention to all of those subtleties, she's telling a story before she even opens her mouth to sing. And then when she opens her mouth to sing, it's like the exclamation or the proclamation of that story to the public. So she had a very internal experience before having more of an external one, but the external one still feels super personal. It's really amazing what she's able to do with such subtle acting choices. Um, and such clear storytelling. Also, that was a beautiful legato line at the beginning, all on one breath. And um, you want to kind of plant a seed and be gentle with the onset of this piece. Let's keep going. <laughs> So this whole entire time, she's been pretty relaxed this entire time. She has also um, had the opportunity to get through all of these long phrases using very efficient breath, which is really beautiful. Um, and she has a lot of musical nuance to each of her phrases. And look, she's hugging, she's holding herself. And to me, for this aria, 
for her to be like a high priestess or in a place in power among her people. And she, she's not playing that flat. She's playing this as a moment of vulnerability for her character. And her character has a very tragic end in this production. So it is just really, really cool that she's exposing that vulnerability and that sincerity behind her character's words. And it kind of brings the, the weight of what is about to happen in the show it brings that weight forward and it makes it it has a heavy quality to it but in a good way it's kind of an emotionally heavy quality um so she's just she's doing so much here so make sure to look really closely at um her facial expression changes and her body gestures because they're telling a story just as much as her vocal line is <laughs> Okay, so that whole entire that whole entire um, section of the aria that we just heard, all of that had so much musical nuance to it, and it's because she was playing around with dynamics. One of the things that I always talk about with my singers, and something that I deeply internalized early in my training, is that we never really want to sing static as singers. The human voice wasn't really meant to move that way, and so. The fact that she's adding subtle crescendos, subtle decrescendos, um, she's creating an arc to every single one of her phrases, all of that is helping her get through these really, really long bel canto lines. And it, all of it is helping her become super, super musical when it comes to expressing the Italian text as well. And not only does this make her more technically efficient, and it means that she's using her breath more efficiently, but it directly feeds her expressivity. It directly feeds how expressive she is and the combination of that with her body gestures and with her facial expressions make for the complete performance. So super, super cool. Super cool. I'm nerding out in case anyone hasn't noticed. <laughs> um, I'm nerding out it is late at night and Taylor is nerding out. So <sighs> I love her so much. Let's keep going. Let's keep going before I keep ranting. <laughs> Like if you like listen to the subtleties of that dramatic contrast real quick, I'm just going to go back one more time. Just listen to this. That use of air right there is really, really, really beautiful. And I can't stress enough how important airflow is as a singer. It's probably the most foundational, most important thing is, is breath management and a deregulation of breathing. I am so sorry. It sounds like somebody's literally drilling a hole in our apartment right now. So I am so sorry if you can hear that in this video. <laughs> but anyway, um, that subtlety of those dynamic shifts allow for more efficient airflow and more efficient usage of air. But um, regulation of your breathing and breathing technique is the foundation of good singing. It's something I always write on the whiteboard when I go in to teach my students. And it is something that I'm trying to deeply internalize because it is also an aspect being an anxious person myself who tends to carry tension in her body, um, it, it also has been an aspect of my artistry that I've struggled with in the past. So it's something I've deeply internalized over my time as a singer. And it's just so beautiful to see what 
can happen when you are using your air as efficiently as you can. She has very balanced onset, so you're not hearing a puff of air at the beginning, or you're not hearing a glottal, like an uh, at the beginning of her onsets. And so she has these very clean, balanced beginnings to her phrases. And then everything has an arc to it, a beginning, middle, and an end. And all of those things are extremely expressive in addition to being technically efficient. Okay, let's keep going. So once again, all of these dynamic shifts, everything is a dynamic shift. She's singing on dynamics constantly. She is not, there's always a push and a pull. This is super, super important for a bel canto singing in my personal opinion. And what's amazing about it is it creates all of these beautiful, like really little subtle ornaments and subtle coloratura that is very, very pleasing to the ear and shimmers. I think she's been classified as a dramatic coloratura at some point in her life, but I don't like to fuck people too much. I'll do a whole video someday on the fox system and how I feel about it. I'm a little salty about it, TBH. Um, but I, I can, I can understand why people would classify her as that because she has that really robust tone, but she also has in incredible agility to her voice if you really put her in a situation where she needs it. And, but she has wonderful legato and she has that full lyrical sound too. And basically, uh, to my understanding, a dramatic coloratura is a full lyric with a coloratura extension. It's a really, really cool combination of skills. So someday, goals. <laughs> just wanted to bring up real quickly the fact that like that entire verse had different dramatic nuances than the first one because she's saying some different text and so she's continuing to keep the story alive and this can be challenging to do when you're singing long arias like this especially if the arias are somewhat strophic or they have kind of like a verse quality to them like this is returning to the same melody but different text 
that can be challenging. Um, it can be challenging to repeat the same melodic line and have dramatic nuance to it. And she's just never forgetting to tell a complete story and she's never losing energy. She's completely engaged in the performance from start to finish. The other really, really incredible thing about her that I witnessed in that whole entire section was the fact that she is interacting with the chorus. She is acknowledging their existence. And a lot in a lot of these concert performances with opera singers that I have seen, sometimes they just don't even acknowledge that the chorus is there and the performance is very presentational, but you, she's interacting with them as if they're characters in the scene. It's very subtle, but it's there. And as a result of that, she really feels like the leader of those people, that high priestess that her character truly is. And so she's really, um, she's embodying that even though this seems like an out of context performance, like this isn't a full opera, Norma. This is a um, concert. <laughs> some hooting and hollering in the audience and that is well earned. So that is Casta Diva sung by the incredible Maria Callas. Did I kind of wish that that high note was a little bit more evenly supported? Yes. That wasn't my favorite high note that I've ever heard Callas do. Um, that being said, there it was an incredible diminuendo on the way down and once again she's always singing on dynamics. So it's always going to have a baseline of beautiful when a singer is always using dynamics to create arcs to all of the phrases. Um, so overall, absolutely phenomenal, beautiful, moving performance. And I love just all of the subtle characterizations, all of the absolutely sincere things that she does with her character here. Um, I honestly think she is somebody that owns this role and I am yet to find a singer that moves me in the same way that Callas does singing this particular aria. I know there are a lot of great singers who have sung this out there, so let me know if you have another one that you're a huge fan of, but this just happens to be my personal favorite interpretation. It feels really weird giving any cons any criticism to like somebody who's such a legend in the opera world when I'm literally like, I don't know, an unborn child still in the opera world in many ways. I'm such a fledgling. <laughs> Um, but the, the reason why I wanted to bring these up was just because it just kind of goes to show that even the most famous singers in the world are not perfect. Like they're human beings and they have vocal issues that they battle with just like all of us do. I definitely have them, of course, myself as well. And a couple of the like little tiny nitpicking things that I noticed is that she sometimes carries some tension into her upper register, which is why I said that I wish that high note was a little bit more free. I also kind of noticed that there's a little bit of like, so you have like these veins that sometimes can pop out in the side of your necks, uh, your neck, you don't have multiple necks. Wow, Taylor, it's late, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, uh, you ha have these veins that can pop out in the side of your neck and those are kind of like the sternocleidomastoid muscles. I, I think I'm saying that correctly. I think that's the name of the muscle. And when those muscles pop out, it can it can be a sign that there's some like neck or uh, throat tension. I hesitate to say throat tension, but definitely some tension that's happening kind of in the upper region of the body. Um, and maybe a little bit too lifted of a larynx. And so as a result of that, those are just some fancy anatomical terms um, saying that she has, she she's carrying a little bit of tension up there and you can kind of tell. Some people naturally have kind of bulging veins on the side, especially if you're, she was pretty thin at this time in her career. And if you're thinner, it can be a little bit, if you're skinnier in this area, it can be a little bit easier to see that. Um, even if you don't have a ton of tension there, um, some people just have that. But at the same time, usually it's kind of an indicator that there's something going on um, 
tension wise or there there's some sound that's funneling back a little bit and honestly <laughs> uh relatable issues <laughs> because a lot of opera singers battle this and like i said even even people that are legends in the opera world even Renee Fleming and Luciano Pavarotti and um, Maria Callas and Joan Sutherland, all of these incredible divas and divos, all of these people had vocal issues that they dealt with too. They are all human beings. And I think sometimes we just put these people on pedestals and we expect them to be like gods and goddesses of the opera world. And that is not true. They're humans that happen to be excellent at their craft and were renowned for their craft but they still had flaws because <laughs> they're humans. So it just kind of goes to show that like, you're never gonna be perfect. You can be excellent, but you're never gonna be perfect. So if my fellow young artists out there, any aspiring singers of any genre find any comfort in this video, I hope they are comforted by that notion. Even Maria Callas had her issues. <laughs> um, and she also, um, from what I have read about her, led a very difficult life, um, kind of a tragic life as well. But she will always be known in the opera world as somebody who revolutionized the interpretation of many of the most famous um, soprano operatic heroines of all time. So brava, beautiful diva. If you would like to check out some of my work as a vocalist, you can subscribe to my solo music channel, which is called Taylor Marie. Um, link to my channel will be below. And uh, if you are interested in more that Opera Cecilia has to offer, go ahead and like and subscribe to this Opera Cecilia YouTube channel as well to be updated on everything that is happening with our company, including a continuation of the Artistic Director Reacts series, where I react to and analyze prominent performances in and out of the opera world. I will see you all again soon around here. So have a good night. Bye.